Thank you very much. Reverend Reed Moenoa, Honorable Laulu Lewatea Schmidt, Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries for Samoa, Honorable Ministers of the Pacific, the FAO Regional Representative for Asia and the Pacific and Assistant Director General, Mr. John Jin Kim, development partners, members of the diplomatic corps, community leaders, representatives of farm association and the private sector. Ladies and gentlemen, both here and those on Zoom, Tsalo Falava and a warm greeting and good morning to you all. It's a pleasure for me to welcome you all to this exciting day of innovation, learning and exchange, kickstarting the discourse on innovative solutions for our Pacific cities. On behalf of the government of Samoa and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, we want to say Faftai Telelava and thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here with us on this very important event. To start us off, in our usual Pacific way, we would like to invite Reverend Brenda Reed Moenoa of the All Saints Anglican Church to lead us in a word of prayer. Reverend, if you please, thank you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lamentations 3, 22 to 24 says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your and living God. We gather today to acknowledge that you are our God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Father, as you see all these wonderful people gathered here, you know the purpose of this meeting. And so we just come before you to acknowledge your presence, to say thank you Thank you for their safe travel, the, your travel mercies upon them, that they arrived safely. Thank you for FAO and the organization of this conference, of this forum. Thank you for everyone who has been able to make it here today. We give you back all the praise and the glory. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy that follow us every day of our lives. Father, these people have come for a specific purpose. They are representatives of our Pacific nations. They are here to find solutions to the problems, to the issues that are besetting our region here in the Pacific. They are from our small island developing states. And so, Lord, we know that you know these things. And so we come before you and uplift them to you. We ask that you bless all the heads and the leaders of our different nations represented here. Your word says that if we want peace in our nations, that we must pray for our leaders. We uplift to you our head of states, our presidents, our prime ministers, our ministers of cabinet, our parliamentarians, all those who make the decisions in our countries that impact the people in this region. We also uplift to you this morning the heads of the UN government agency, UN agencies, all the NGOs, all the regional, the international organizations that are represented here today, the men and women from the Pacific. Thank you, Lord, for their presence. Thank you for their willingness to do the work that you have called them to do for the good of our region. Father, they have come here. They have come to make specific plans. 
And so my purpose for this prayer, Lord, is to just ask your blessing upon them. Bless them that they will be able to do the work that you have called them to do, that you will remind them of the things that they need to include in their plans, that you will give them innovative ideas, transforming ideas and solutions to help them to combat, to come against all the issues and things that are happening around the region. Lord, we ask that you will forgive us. Forgive us as individuals for the things we do, the things that we, the things that happen to us that are not good and impact the lives of others. We ask that you forgive our government leaders for the decisions that they make that don't always make good sense to the rest of the nation. But Lord, we know that you are good and your love endures forever. So we ask that you also forgive the big brother, the bigger nations, the richer nations, those that make decisions that impact us here in the Pacific, that have caused a lot of the climate change issues that we see, all the other things that we know that are happening because of the way they deal with their governments and their issues with each other. Lord, we come before you humbly asking your forgiveness. And now we ask that you will just bless each and every one here. Lord, plant your love in their hearts. Nurture them with your compassion. Help them to remember the people that they represent here today. And as they say, no one will be left behind. But Lord, we must also remember that no one is an island and every single person here in the Pacific represents a community, a wider family, an extended family, an ainga, a smaller family unit, a village, a church, the nation. We also remember all the other issues that are going on at this time, the 16 days of activism. Bless all the women and men who are working towards stopping violence against women and children. And Father, there is a lot happening, but we know that you know, and these people here are gathered and they know, and they will put together plans that will ref reflect you and your love on your people here in the Pacific. That is our prayer today in Jesus' name. And I, and I present the blessing, Lord, the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and the, God the Holy Spirit be with you all today and forevermore. Have a wonderful meeting in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend, for the very inspiring words of prayer, which I'm sure will guide our discussion today with the spirit of humility and love. Um, with this, I would like to give as a token of appreciation from the government of Samoa um, a very small uh, gift. And with this, I'd like to now welcome Mr. John Jin Kim, our FAO Assistant Director General for, and Regional Representative for Asia and Pacific, to provide the opening remarks. Mr. Kim, the floor is yours. It's up to you. Honorable Minister, Laudi Laudia Pulatabao Kosi the Minister of Agriculture and Forestry of Samoa, honorable ministers across the Pacific, community leaders, representatives of farm associations, developing partners, and members of the diplomatic corps. It is my great pleasure to be here with you in person to represent FAO and warmly welcome you to this 2022 Pacific Seeds Solution Forum being co-organized 
by FAO and hosted by the government of Samoa. I'm pleased to see such a remarkable attendance from the Pacific Seas leaders, in particular ministers, permanent secretaries, CEOs, and other senior officials from the government. Also, the local communities, NGOs, academia, private sector. It is really encouraging to see that such a large group of leaders from different stakeholders get together to discuss about most important challenges and opportunities and the solutions for uh, seeds in Pacific. My special thanks go to Honorable Lauli uh, uh, Lutia, uh, Polata Baoposi, the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, and the government of uh, Samoa for excellent support and the arrangement to organize this very important event. FA has enjoyed very warm hospitality of the people and the government of Samoa for more than two decades. So it is always a pleasure when we work with the government of Samoa to host leaders from the Pacific and the other parts of the world to discuss and advance our shared agenda for the development. As you know, the region covered by the FAO Region Office for Asia and the Pacific is vast. 46 countries stretching from Iran in the far west as far east as here in the island nations of the southwest Pacific. While the small island developing states of the Pacific our very important FAO member states may feel at times somewhat isolated geographically from the larger uh, Asia Pacific region. But I can assure you, FAO's strong commitments to work with and work for the Pacific seas. FAO Director General Dr. Chu Dong Yu brought the seeds at the center of the policy with the creation of the dedicated division at the headquarters in Rome. Our director of this division is here today in person. Thank you very much, Angelica. Also, the work of FAO colleagues here in the sub region office under the direction of uh, Ms. Uh, Yao Xiang Jun has been very impressive. Thank you, Yao. As we start this high-level event today, please allow me to remind you of some key outcomes of the first ever Pacific, uh, first ever Seeds Solution Forum convened in 2021. The most common and recurrent theme uh, from the leaders at the first forum was the need to support locally grown solutions of innovation and digitalization that can accelerate the achievement of SDGs while mitigating the impacts of climate change, the COVID pandemic, and most recently, so-called the 5F crisis triggered by Ukraine war. The highlight of the uh, last year's forum was the decision to launch the Seed Solution Platform in view of the vast opportunities that it could provide for knowledge exchange and collaboration among seeds in the Pacific as well as across the continent. It was a dedicated venue to exchange innovative tools 
and to scale up good ideas. The forum also recognized vast potential of innovations and the digital technologies to provide scalable solutions to tackle the many common challenges faced by seeds agri-food systems. Participants made this very important recommendations, which were summarized into 12 key action points. They include application of ICT, information communication technology in agriculture, building financial and digital literacy, and supporting women and youth, mobilizing resources and promote partnership to support 2030 agenda for sustainable development, and establishing structured and targeted regional financing system, which should be appropriate for CIS's unique context. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we know that as a major part of Asia-Pacific region, the Pacific has its unique regional challenges and opportunities. As we said, the impact of the climate change, COVID-19, and the recent 5F crisis on top of recurrent natural disasters are a continuing menace that undermine agricultural production, nutrition, health, and environmental and the life uh, of Pacific uh, Island in general. The tsunami in Tonga earlier this year, which nearly de uh, devastated the in entire economy of the country, is just one example of uh, severe uh, impact and uh, the difficult context of the Pacific seas are confronting. I know that this is the uh, cyclone season in the Pacific, so I am aware that, uh, for example, Fiji, Samoa, Tonga, Vanuatu, among others, could experience more than two possibly of these episodes in the single year. This also highlights that our response to climate change must recognize that it affects not only infrastructure, but also crops, fisheries, livestock, forestry, and health and diets of the people. The FAO Regional Office and the Pacific Sub Regional Office stand with you to help get the best out of agriculture, and not only for nutrition and food security, but also to protect the environment. As we heard from COP27 most recently, good agriculture practices should not only be known for land scarcity and deforestation, but also for contributing to reduction of greenhouse gas emission. So it was good to know the outcome of COP27 focused on helping small nations like seeds respond to these threats through the creation of a special fund. Let me also highlight here that these responses take on a greater urgency in the Pacific due to other simultaneous challenges. I know, as you do, that unlike other parts of the world, the impacts of COVID-19 have disproportionately affected Pacific seas. This is largely because of uh, the import-dependent economies. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Also, those who are joining remotely, 
The theme for this year's forum is working together to leave no one behind, which is aligned to the SDGs, but also the new FAO strategic framework, which supports the achievements and the sustain, uh, sustenance of better production, better nutrition, better environment, and better life, leaving no one behind. Our goal is to make our agri-food system more efficient, inclusive, more resilient, and more, more sustainable, so that everyone can benefit. The overall objective of this year's Pacific Sea Solution Forum is to follow up and build on the Global Sea Solution Forum last year through identifying country-specific and regional uh, uh, successes. Also, we discuss as well the challenges and next steps. During this Pacific Sea Solution Forum, we will concentrate on concrete initiatives and actions that can facilitate the use of innovation, digitalization, partnership, South-South cooperation to transform the Pacific national agri-food systems. Indeed, those of you attending in person here will have a chance to see firsthand some of the innovations and how they work during spe special demonstration sessions uh, spelled out in the forum agenda. As you deliberate various issues throughout three days, I encourage you to focus on actions, build various partnerships, learn from your colleagues, and develop action plans. FAO's regional and the sub-regional office and our partners through the SIS solution platform will endeavor to facilitate the realization of your agendas. So thank you very much, and I wish you all the success of the forum. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ADG Kim, for your warm remarks and for officially opening the forum. May I ask um, our distinguished guests in the front if we could perhaps a, a more comfortable seat, um, ADG and Honorable Minister and Reverend, if you would like to, to locate um, when, before we start our formal session, our actual sessions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, before we move on to the outline of our proceedings today, I would like to quickly cover a few housekeeping matters and notices for our meeting. For any questions regarding um, logistical matters on your stay, please speak to the ladies in the, um, the registration desk outside, namely a Miss Lara Tima. For any issues pertaining, pertaining to the program and its contents, Please refer your queries to Joseph Nyenma and Ms. Chamina Saili. If I could have those colleagues quickly raise your hand very fast, Chamina and Joseph. There are focal points in the back, so any um, questions on the program, please refer it to them. Um, for please be advised, morning tea will be a working morning tea. It will be outside on our left through those doors, so please feel free as the day progresses, help yourself to tea and coffee and some of the, um, the refreshments outside. We will then have, please note that lunch will be hosted at the field visit site with the um, uh, scientific research organization for Sam Moore. Uh, in terms of uh, IT matters, kindly note that the Wi-Fi will be streamed, was streamed, sorry, um, a code and an access has, was provided 
Should you have further questions on that, we have Henry Mailo, who's behind the screens on this side to my right, uh, to ask for the Wi-Fi password. Any, in terms of uh, multi-plugs, our colleagues here are the lucky ones. They have all the access to the multi-plugs. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get multi-plugs for the back of the room. So please, if there's a need, a desperate need, then you, you may have to ask colleagues to, to support you there. Uh, in addition to that, we would like to ask that you use the mics that are in front of you. It's very important um, when, before speaking, please press the button, you'll see a red light come on. After you make your intervention, please turn it off. Uh, the reason why this is very important is because currently we are streaming and we are recording, and therefore it's, very, um, it's essential for us to speak on the mics for our colleagues online to be able to hear. Um, and finally, any issues with regards to IT, as I mentioned before, as uh, Henry Mailo is on this side, as well as Ken, um, who is, wave your hand, Ken, for everybody to see. Maybe stand up as well, okay. uh, for any IT issues. Um, in addition to that, we do have a link running for Zoom for colleagues who are participating online, uh, and therefore it's, um, it's very important, once again, that when we are speaking, we use the mics that um, uh, you are given. And also, please do not join the link to that Zoom if you are in this conference room, uh, mainly because we have a very limited Wi-Fi and we don't want the link to collapse. And finally, uh, to our colleagues online, Dalo Falava, um, please, uh, as you'll be joining us for the first half of the day, the facilitators will do their utmost best to include you um, in, uh, in ensuring your comments and questions are regularly sought, uh, but we do ask that you kindly adhere to the usual Zoom etiquette that we've become used to over the past few years. Mute your microphones when you're not speaking, and please raise your hand should you wish, wish to make any intervention. So that's it for our housekeeping rules. And now to take you through a very quick outline of our day. As you will note from your program, up next is our session two on SID Solutions Innovators. And this session will take place from 9.30 to 11.30. During this session, we will hear from four innovators who were featured in last year's SID Solution Hybrid Forum. They will take us through their exciting year's journey the feats achieved, the gains made, and we will even see some of the innovative uh, work that's have, that, that, how some of these innovations work. The featured four are the MyKana app for nutrition education, created by the Fiji Ministry of Health and the University of South Pacific. The Maua app e-commerce platform, locally created by the Samoan private company. The vanilla farming and e-marketing, locally owned and operated here in Samoa, and Solomon's very own Jedom Organi Fruits and Hot Air Dryer. After session two, those of us in this room will then have the opportunity to take a very scenic field trip outside of the hotel to three different sites on island. Um, and this will be kindly organized by our hosts, the government of, of Samoa. And the government of Samoa has also generously provided transportation to the sites and we will be leaving the hotel approximately around 11.30, um, with the site visits expected to go up until 4.30 this afternoon. Um, instructions with regards to the buses for transportation um, will be provided by the government of Samoa staff, the Ministry of Agriculture staff, who will be just outside waiting for us when it's time to depart from this venue. Uh, for your information, as obvious on your programs, we will stop first at the Scientific Research Organization, uh, which is Samoa's key food development and testing laboratory. Um, and then we will have uh, lunch there, kindly provided by the government. Our second sites will be the Samoa China Agricultural Technical Aid Project, a very good example of South-South cooperation in action. And last but not least, we will wrap up our site visits with the Aliki Commercial Farm, a locally owned and operated private company where we will see agro-technology in operation. On behalf of the organizing committee, I humbly request to remind country delegations 
to take the opportunity to, during today's session to identify innovations that you would like to take back and adapt in your respective countries. And where possible, already pre-identify partners which you wish to partner with in these initiatives. You will have an opportunity, um, just to let you know, to share your thoughts on the field visits tomorrow afternoon. There will be a session where country delegations will be asked to report, report back on today's field visits, and each country will have five minutes to do so. So, my apologies for a very long but a very important overview. Now, without further ado, um, we'd like to now go on to our four innovators. Um, to our innovators, you have approximately 30 minutes each. We will um, chime in five minutes to your mark, um, just to let you know of our, of our timing. Ladies and gentlemen, to start off our session to SID Solution Innovators, please join me in welcoming Ms. Ateda Kama, Ms. Alvina Darrow, um, to take us through the MyKana app of, for nutrition education. Ladies, you have the floor. Naka. Healthier with a new MyKana app. Simply download the MyKana app from the Google Play Store. Enter your details, add what you ate and your daily water intake. Compare this with My Healthy Plate. Since MyKana is designed in Fiji for Fijians, you can plan your meals from a variety of nutritious local foods. MyKana for a healthier Fiji. Available now. Visit us on Facebook or Twitter to find out more. Hope you enjoyed that short uh, intro video. The Honorable, Honorable Minister of Agriculture, uh, Samoa Ministry of Agriculture, and respected uh, Honorable Ministers of the Pacific, respected permanent secretaries, Chief of Seeds Unit at the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, Assistant FAO Director General, FAO Sub-Regional Coordinator, distinguished leaders, farm associations, members of the SEEDS community, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be here on behalf of the Government of Fiji and the Ministry of Health and Medical Services. I bring with me the Mbula greetings of our permanent secretary, Dr. James Fong, and our developer, Dr. Irene Mary Chief, who are unable to be here. The MyKana app is a nutrition education tool developed by the Fiji Ministry of Health and Medical Services and the University of the South Pacific. MyKana has the capacity to determine the nutritional contents of your meals. For example, the breakfast that we had this morning. This innovative tool was showcased last year at the Global Seed Solutions Forum, but we are showcasing again, again this year for the following reasons. First, it represents a partnership in which FAO has invested money to expand the innovation from Fiji to Tonga so that it can benefit the local population in facilitating nutrition education. And I hope the countries from the region in this forum represented here will also take up this initiative, of course, in their own languages. Second, it uh, represents the success story of FAO. Sorry, it represents the success story of FAO seed solutions uh, platforms, unique value proposition, which the FAO Director General described as results-driven solutions in local challenges in advancing the achievement of the SDGs. Third, it demonstrates that development partners can successfully advance the SDGs by facilitating knowledge sharing. This is because after the MyKana app was profiled and showcased in 2021, our Global Seed Solutions Forum, the government of Tonga, um, and I can see my Tongan colleagues represented here, immediately requested FAO to support them by building a partnership with the government of Fiji and the University of the South Pacific that would allow them to replicate and adapt the nutrition education tool to the Tongan local dialect. I am pleased to say 
that with the financial investment from FAO, this replication has been successfully achieved. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mrs. Elvina Dow, the manager of National Food and Nutrition Center from the Fiji Ministry of Health and Medical Services to walk us through the MyKana app. Ms. Dow. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just uh, quickly uh, share with you, sorry, uh, the MyKana app, and I hope you were able to download the app this morning, uh, but you haven't. If you haven't, you also have the flyer in your folders that can guide you through. So as Mrs. Kama mentioned, the support from FAO was uh, able to help us uh, replicate the app into the Tongan language. So it's just, sorry, it's just a matter of changing the language settings on the app, which focuses on food and nutrition security for uh, Fijian and Tongan households. Um, and it's easy to download, so you also have the QR um, uh, scan uh, on the two banners uh, in front of the stage. So if you have an opportunity, I would encourage you to use it. You only need to have the internet while you are downloading. The rest of the app is uh, offline, so you don't need to have internet while you are using the app. So the <clears throat> app has three main features. One is the My Meals component. The other one is uh, in the Pacific, we sometimes forget to drink our water. So the app also features a reminder on us to drink enough water. Um, and the last one is on having a home garden. So while we were developing this app um, in 2017, one of the things that came up uh, when we are encouraging consumption of a healthy plate, which is half of it is fruits and vegetables, people mentioned that they don't have enough uh, fruits and vegetables to eat. So that's how we brought in the my, uh, garden component, which helps people to plant. So it's customized to each user. So if you've downloaded it this morning, you'll see it's asking you a few uh, personal details in terms of your height, your weight, and it calculates the BMI and gives you a, a profile of your calorie intake throughout the day. So this is quite important, because this is how the app is tailor-made for you. And then the meal uh, and nutrition tracker, so it allows you to build your own recipes and uh, tailor-make it for yourself. It uh, tracks your daily consumption by, by meal, and interestingly, when you put in your initial details, it, it's also by the amount of food that you're consuming, it helps you identify uh, uh, weight loss, uh, if you are losing weight or gaining weight, and also your waste uh, uh, ratio, which is quite important in trying to tackle NCDs. And uh, the unique thing with the MyKana app, you would find hundreds of food apps uh, on the internet. But the unique thing for MyKana is it's based on the Pacific Islands food composition table. So the foods that you find on this app is unique to us in the Pacific. So that's why it's, it's gaining popularity in the communities because they are able to find roro or taro leaves or the um, seijan uh, or bo um, yeah, so everything that we have in our home, uh, in, in our meals. And uh, we've also included uh, common recipes. So it has uh, uh, recipes that we are familiar with uh, incorporated into the app. And also for the Tongan uh, version, we've also done about 30, 20 to 30 Tongan recipes that is commonly eaten. So those are also in the app that the user is able to pre-select and they don't have to put the details on the app. The home gardening component is based on a booklet that was developed by the National Food and Nutrition Center, Ministry of Agriculture and FEO in Fiji. So it's just a direct adaptation of this app, uh, sorry, the book into the app. 
Uh, and this allows uh, the users to be able to uh, know what to plant. So even anyone, no one has an excuse of not knowing how to plant uh, chilies or eggplant because it shows you step by step on how to plant and it's customized to our climate. Um, so it has, uh, it's based on the Fijian crop calendar. So uh, it has the two main planting seasons and uh, it also has features. So if you'll see on the, the lower image, uh, step by step on how to uh, start from germination to transplanting to um, uh, harvesting as well. Uh, and also provides a quick snapshot of the main nutrients of the plant that you are growing at home. <coughs> And in the urban centers, uh, we usually have the complaint that we don't have space to plant. So we've also incorporated container gardening. So any little container, the water bottles that's lying around at home, there is tips and uh, steps on how to do this as well. And uh, while the Pacific is still uh, very much onto commercial fertilizers, uh, we've uh, gone ahead to include organic homemade uh, fertilizers and how to do that as well. So the app also has a section on making your own homemade uh, fertilizers, so looking at compost and making compost tea uh, for uh, your own use at home. And uh, we didn't forget the pests, so we also have a section on making homemade pest uh, control measures. So you have simple things like an oil spray, a chili spray, uh, those things that you can uh, make with readily available items at home. Uh, and it also has a little diary for you to keep as well. So sometimes when we plant, we forget uh, how many days later we need to transplant or we added fertilizer and we didn't note it anywhere. So this uh, app also features where you make your own diary and you know uh, what you can do. And the unique thing is you can take pictures at every stage, so you can proudly show it off on social media as well that you've uh, grown uh, eggplants and this is your harvest at home. So where do you find us? Uh, the team is unique because uh, uh, we are government uh, at Ministry of Health uh, the nutrition component of the team and uh, academia from USP. So we both have social media platforms where we advocate for the uh, app as well. And so I'd encourage you, if you haven't, uh, at morning tea, try using MyKana and uh, just you'd be very much surprised the amount of calories that you'd be consuming uh, during this three days workshop here. So thank you very much. I'd give it back to Mrs. Kama. So just to add, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, this Saturday, 3rd December, our USP team back home will be piloting the Tongan version of the Maikana app at the Api Tonga Church in Fiji. So for all uh, Tongan residents back home, uh, please join the Maikana app team at the Apitonga Church in Suva. And um, there, will, there is a planned presentation to Tonga Health and the Ministry of Health um, Services in uh, Tonga in January 2023. So Maikana Fiji and Maikana Tonga, uh, promoting healthy eating and tracking calories. Not only that, it also helps us to um, know how to plant when to plant, where to plant, what to plant, and maintain your garden. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want your local version of the MyKana app, please talk to FAO and the development partners who are here in this forum. We're not going to live for your attention. Vinakavakalevu and Faftai Telelava, Ms. Kama and Ms. Dale, for a very informative and exciting um, presentation on this MyKana app. We had to convince the ladies to come back up here. They're very shy. 
<laughs> so I'd like to once again put them on the spot. Um, please, we'd like to open up the opportunity for colleagues around the room, as well as those online, to please ask any questions or comments you may have regarding the app. So please, um, if you do, please uh, raise your hand. Or also, Henry, if you could let me know if there's anybody online that's raising their hands. Thank you so much. Yes, a colleague from Cook Islands, I assume. Thank you. Kirana, good morning. Um, thank you for the comprehensive presentation. I'm Bob Williams. I'm the Secretary of Health from the Cook Islands. Understanding that Fiji started the Kana app for some time now, my interest is in terms of uh, monitoring and evaluation of the app, the information that goes with it, especially with the healthy diets. Uh, whether there has been any monitoring of that information, whether it feeds with the Ministry of Health in terms of reducing NCD. Thank you, sir. Um, the Ministry of Health and Medical Services in Fiji conducts the National Nutrition Survey, uh, last of which was in 2014. 2015, the launch was up in 2017, so we're looking forward to um, uh, final evaluation in 2024 and 2025. Um, other than that, our partner developers at the University of the South Pacific, um, because they hold the server, if that's what it's called, they do a monthly um, update of number of downloads and uh, the reach of the app, um, not only in Fiji, but in the region as well. Previously, it was geolocked to Fiji only, but uh, now um, seeds, uh, including uh, Australia and New Zealand, are able to do that. Um, our NCD strat plan has just been endorsed, and it includes um, a strategy on the use of the MyCana plan. Um, the policy cascades into a seven-year framework from 2023 to 2030, uh, at the end of which uh, we should be able to evaluate the use of the MyCana as well, not only from the National Nutrition Survey, but from the NCD Strait Plan as well. Thank you, if that answers your question. Thank you. Any other questions from colleagues around the room? Yes. Uh Delegates in the back in pink, if we could have a roaming mic, please, our IT team. Thank you. Um, Lefa Ali'i from the Ministry of um, Telecommunication Information Technology. I was just wondering um, how accurate the information that you're collecting from this app in terms of um, translating it into um, data for formal analysis. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll take one more question and then we'll hand over to um, our colleagues from Maikana. Yes, uh, the gentleman in the back, um, please. Aloha, it's Clara Percival and um, manufacturer in Samoa. And uh, thank you. I've actually used the FAO um, data quite extensively. Um, I've found discrepancies between FAO's data, FDA's, and, and um, Australian New Zealand Food Safety Authority and FSA the SANS data on nutritional levels. But the thing that really gets to me is the reality is we need to know the glycemic index and the glycemic loading of the food. And I'll give you an example. Taro, according to the Sydney University study, has 4% GI. Rice has 80%. So if you have rice for breakfast and you have taro for breakfast, you will work for longer and more sustained and you won't absorb as much than if you ate rice. And the amount you eat will reflect in the way you can work. So I, I like the app and I, I like the idea because when I have to do nutrition information panels on packaging with, and we produce these foods, and when we did a nutrition information panel, we had great difficulty verifying some of the data, and in fact, with Taro 
and with breadfruit, we've discovered that a loading of about 300 grams can give you about 90% of your nutritional requirements for the day. The daily requirements, depending on how hard you work. If you sit at a desk, it's probably 150. But if you're out in the field, it's probably 80. So, you know, there's quite a lot. It's, it's a lot more complex than just telling people this is what it's like. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Grant. But can I have a hand over to you? And then possibly our colleagues from FAO can also add on to the question from um, the gentleman in the back. Thank you. Uh, to respond to Mem's uh, question at the back, the MyKana app is uh, as accurate as the information that you uh, input into it uh, because it uh, uses your personal um, uh, status, for example, your anthropometry measurements and your age, and it calculates accordingly to your personal history that you enter into the, into the MyKana app. Um, responding to the second question, the MyKana app uh, was initially designed to uh, help with changing behavior of our individuals in Fiji, Tonga, and the rest of SEEDS if they wish to take it on. Um, right now, FAO is assisting the countries uh, to review the Pacific Island Foods Composition Table, so perhaps um, the glycemic index of the food can be a feature of the Pacific Islands Foods Composition Table as well, so that when we input our data, particularly with tracking calories, we also take into account the glycemic index that you just mentioned. So um, uh, perhaps a request to FAO uh, at this uh, moment to consider, please, the including of the inclusion of the MyKana app um, glycemic index into the Pacific Islands Food Composition Table. Unaka. Thank you very much. Um, perhaps Joseph could also add on to um, this last point made by Ateda about the composition tables. Yeah. Over to you, Joseph. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Ateka, and, uh, and thanks to um, uh, Mr. Grant for the question. Um, I'm not going to say a lot, uh, just to say that uh, this is a process in development, and there are a lot of things we need to put together. Absolutely, the Pacific Food Composition Tables, I think the current version was, de was developed about 20 years ago, so it has expired because the, the diets have changed in the Pacific. So we have this on our desk to update this table, not only at the regional level, but to look at it nationally. Um, so once this is updated also, this technology, then we will start to bring everything together um, to develop it gradually. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joseph. Please, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause once again to our MyKana app team. Um, I was going to ask two more questions of them, but they ran away before we could. So, Vinaka Vakalevu once again, Ateda, and to um, Elvina, I really appreciate your time. So, if, um, if I may now also introduce our next innovator on our list, the Mawa app e-commerce platform. Um, for those of you who are unaware of the MAWA app, this innovation was showcased at the SID Solution platform, launched in 2021. It is once again being showcased here today because the MAWA app demonstrates perfectly the objectives of the SID Solution platform, which is to facilitate knowledge sharing. The success of the MAWA app and its expansion locally has birthed an ambition by the creators to replicate this innovation across the Pacific, thereby facilitating the sharing of knowledge on this innovation solution. So without further ado, can I please invite onto the podium um, the Mawa App team, Ms. Anna Maria Saili, the Mawa App Manager, and Ms. Andi Tafunai, the Director of the Women in Business um, uh, Development Incorporated, a key partner to the Mawa App. Ladies and gentlemen, the MAWA app. Thank you. Um, 
Thank you, Fasili. Talofa Lava, Honorable Ministers, Officials, and Senior Development Partners, I'd like to thank FAO and the Government of Samoa for this opportunity to share SkyEye's MOA app. Uh, SkyEye is a multi-award winning locally owned IT solutions company operating in Samoa, Vanuatu, Tonga, and the Solomon Islands. We specialize in geospatial solutions, localizing solutions to solve pressing needs in the Pacific through social impact projects, the largest of these being the MAWA platform. The MAWA app is a social enterprise platform. It was created to have an impact on improving livelihoods for our most vulnerable rural women, persons with disabilities, and youth. The MOA contributes to SDGs by providing equal, safe access to markets and the ability to access decent work and an income from home. Uh, the platform is able to easily access local, um, provide local nutritious food to the Samoan population. For technology to be effective, you need to genuinely connect and consider your stakeholders in design. We partnered with the Ministry of Women, Community and Social Development, NOLA, the Disability Advocacy Group, Women in Business, um, Women in Business, uh, Potasi Development Trust, Samoa Women's Association of Growers, Samoa Victim Support Group, and Samoa Business Hub. Um, in these features, we developed accessibility features for the visually impaired and also consulted with those with limited mobility on their ability to access markets. We also have the app available in our local languages for our rural community. Um, with the lack of street addresses in the Pacific, we developed a digital addressing system allowing people to work from home and those in rural areas to access markets in urban areas. So this is what MOA looks like. Vendors have their store own store access and customers can order a delivery service with digital payment. Customers can, I'll just quickly show you what the app looks like. So this is the app, it's available on web and mobile. Um, when you go into a store, this is what it looks like. You can add it to cart and customers will have the ability to choose delivery or uplift. Um, for the payment methods, we have mobile money, as not everyone can open a bank account, um, card payments, both locally and overseas. So for Samoans, our diaspora from overseas can order for their families in Samoa. Once the payment is through, the vendors have their own access through the Apple website. Um, we also provide training and support for this and work through NGOs. Um, with this digital payment platform through our payment gateway, vendors, even roadside vendors, are able to receive payments from overseas on the same day, in their own phone, at their own home. Uh, we were privileged to assist our Samoan people during COVID lockdown level three when movements were limited, um, providing medicine um, as the only essential contactless delivery provider, providing medicine, prescriptions, groceries, as well as topping up electricity. We were able to work with our NGOs, um, Botasi Development Trust, um, to allow these women 34 kilometers away to still deliver produce during lockdown um, and earn an income for their majority women and provide nutritious food during a pandemic. Um, we're also able to work with Wibdi um, to take their monthly organic markets online. Uh, this has been running for 2.5 years, produced uh, 60,000 direct to rural communities with 60% rural women and includes the islands of Manono, Apolima, and Sava'i. We're also privileged to work with the, 
with the government's Ministry of Agriculture on a key program um, for improving, improving productivity. For improving productivity, assisting with the efficiency and transparency of disbursement of grants. So this grant is uh, 6.5 million uh, grant disbursement to 700 beneficiaries. So we took the program from manual PO disbursements, which caused delays um, by the farmers. By the time the farmers got their goods, the season was over or the suppliers didn't have it, COVID adding delays. So with the digital system, the timeline went from 90 days to 24 hours. So this was possible due to a progressive Ministry of Agriculture and good um, partnership. How the system works is essentially a grant is created as an e-voucher with all the eligibility in there, um, restricting the products so it's not misused and the suppliers. Um, the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Agriculture are able to review it in real time. As soon as it's approved, it goes straight to the supplier, it's fulfilled, and it will then be available in a dashboard to all um, necessary stakeholders. So lastly, we are very honored to have expanded to Vanuatu this year. We had launched in November, just recently, by the then Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Ismail Kalsakau, the now Prime Minister. So we're excited to be in this market and see the work we can do. And we're excited to expand to other Pacific Islands. Thank you. I'll hand it over to the Executive Director, Andy Tsufunai. Thank you, Anna. <clears throat> I work for a non-governmental organization, Women in Business Development. Um, we work to help people who are vulnerable and live rurally to earn an income where they live by adding value to what they grow, basically. Uh, we work with an organic program, and every month before COVID happened, we would have an organic, a monthly organic market. So COVID came almost after the measles epidemic, and when that happened, we immediately contacted Sky Eye because we've, they've been partners of ours for the last nine years, I think. Eh? <laughs> and uh, so all, all of our issues like this, we go to them. Uh, they've supported us in the, um, around the Pacific. We've worked in the Solomon Islands for over four years. And with their help, which they did without any remuneration, we created the first organically certified island, <clears throat> Simbo Island in the Western province. So anyway, to come back to this, we talked about it and about how the MOA app could create a virtual market for us because our big concern was our farmers being able to earn an income. And so um, Sky Eye and the MOA team set everything up. It was probably two months before talking around this before we opened up our first virtual market. Um, there were lots of issues. We had some complaints. <laughs> it was very new to the farmer, new as well to the people who were buying. But it was exciting for us because our farmers living rurally, living on the two little islands you see between Upolu and Savai, Manono and Apolima, they were able to put their products on the MOA app, and people were able to buy. Uh, when we started out, it was all just bought locally, um, but then we started getting orders all the way from New Zealand when the payment systems were, were set up. So we went to, farmers were, um, it was a little hard getting around, so they began cooking salmon food and going back to eating our food that we grow, the food from the sea. So this project actually picked up a lot more fishers. And we had the fishermen and women from Manono and Apolima also getting their produce sold here, um, and from Savai. So I think um, it's something that should work for, especially for islands where people are even more isolated from markets than we are. Um, and I would just um, say that 
working to support people socially is just as important as being a farmer and doing what you do. Um, yeah, so it has been a really significant um, experience for us. We're learning something new every day, and hopefully this can continue with us. Thank you very much, Andy and Anna Maria, um, for that. a true um, uh, innovative um, initiative where we see the fusing together of digitalization and helping of our um, rural farmers as well. So I, it's a really um, good initiative that we were hearing about today. Without further ado, once again, I'd like to open up the floor to colleagues in the room as well as those online uh, for any questions or comments you may wish to direct to the ladies on my left. Yes, the delegate from Tonga. Um, thank you, Vasily, uh, <clears throat> for the opportunity. Before, I, I have some general comments to make, but before I continue on to that, let me uh, acknowledge the, our sincere thanks on behalf of the government of Tonga, for the government of Samoa, and the FAO for hosting this uh, very important meeting. Uh, we are very pleased to take part in this meeting, even though this is our first time in this uh, meeting. But uh, I'm very pleased to acknowledge our gratitude for being here this morning. I am from the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Food and Forest, and I am very pleased that I'm here with the CEO of the Ministry of Health to take part in this meeting and also one representative from our Ministry of Fishery. Uh, I am very pleased with the uh, uh, opening remarks of this uh, meeting. I think the uh, FAO uh, representative put some perspective on this uh, uh, meeting. And I'm very pleased with the encouragement for us to develop locally our uh, respective countries. So I am very pleased to, to acknowledge the, uh, the, the, the previous presenters. Tonga is very supportive with the uh, uh, innovative applications that you have uh, uh, presented today. So I am just uh, looking for the future and looking forward that the uh, FAO and the donor partner will contribute to ensure that all these applications and uh, innovative software, whatever how you call it, will go down to uh, the grassroots level in our respective country. Uh, I have no questions about the importance of all these uh, uh, applications, but I'm looking for some more capacity building as we go along to make sure that these applications are going down to our, to the grassroots of our respective country. Thank you, uh, Vasily. Vasily, um, I'll take two more questions, if that's okay with the ladies, and then we will provide some responses. Yes, Honorable Minister from Samoa. Can you, uh, please, Anna Maria, express more about your name, what Mawa app means in Samo, in English, please. Uh, thank you, Honorable Minister, for the question. So Mawa is a Samoan word that means to find or to have available. If you drive along the coast in Samoa, you'll see these delicacies, right? These people selling fish and seafood along the coast and it'll say moa, this fish and that fish. So that is the heart and why we started moa because these are highly demanded goods that we have to drive out to get. These people don't have the markets 
and you know they could be making a lot of money. There's a high value for it locally, but we just don't have the time. Both sides lose out. Um, so that's uh, we named it because it's a Pacific platform, and we were delighted to find actually in Vanuatu that in the island of Ifira, they have a similar word with a similar meaning. So just our shared Pacific um, regionalism. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions? Henry, any questions online? If not, I'd like to just very quickly respond um, to the comments made by the representative from the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry um, and Food in Tonga. Um, I think your, your intervention is, is very much epitomizes what we're here for today. It's taking these um, high-end solutions of digital um, uh, innovations and seeing how we can really help the grassroots level and our people at, um, at, the, at the community level. And I think that's exactly what um, was, was clearly outlined and highlighted by Andy through the collaboration with the Mawa app and, the, and um, Sky Eye in bringing our farmers and giving them that platform to be able to reach a wider market. So I think it's, it's the discourse. I think it's very important for us to, um, to, to have that discourse. Uh, and FAO, obviously, and partners are all working towards this um, linking and, and bringing together of our, of our um, different um, focus groups. So with that, I'd like now another, if I could please ask you for another round of applause for our ladies um, from Maui. Thank you very much, Andy and Anna Maria. So our third, on to our third innovation, the Vanilla Farming and E-Marketing Initiative, um, which is owned and managed by Ms. Shirley Burridge of Bawala here in Samoa. Unfortunately, Mrs. Burridge isn't able to um, be with us today. However, we will be watching a video um, um, on her initiative um, later. Um, we're very excited to specifically showcase this innovation for some following reasons. Firstly, the innovation is led by a female Pacific Islander, a Samoan in that, who found success during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic when movements were restricted and national economies were disrupted. She discovered success in selling her vanilla products online to customers in Australia, New Zealand, and the United States, and even several countries in Europe. Secondly, Mrs. Burridge invited FAO to support her vision to train and provide startup kits for other women, other women, sorry, but also men who were interested in establishing a new stream of family income. As a result, a partnership was born together with the School of Agriculture and Food Technology in the University of South Pacific. FAO has invested resources to empower more training and recruitment of women and men in this particular innovation. The creator is now inviting development partners to work with her in expanding this innovation of vanilla production and marketing across the Pacific Island countries and has proven a success which has contributed to the nutrition and food security of the country. I now invite or the audience or us here in the room to please listen and to observe a short video on this particular innovation of vanilla. Um, and e-marketing. Henry, please, if you could play the video. Talofa Lava. My name is Shelley Burrich and I am an organic vanilla farmer based in Bawala in Samoa. I am now the sole commercial vanilla farmer in Samoa and a woman entrepreneur. As a FAO uh, SID Solutions Innovator, I had the privilege of presenting and representing Samoa and my vanilla farm at the uh, SIDS Forum in 2021. And during that time, I had the opportunity to represent the other innovators around the region and spoke on behalf of them. Since the SID Solutions Forum, I have seen growth in my farm and that is through helping me put together a blog so that I could prepare these uh, weekly blogs to get myself out there. I think that is what the solutions innovators really need, is that we need to have more visibility. Another aspect of 
What FAO has done for me as a solutions innovator is that they heard what I needed, and that was to help grow the vanilla industry here in Samoa. So part of that was they helped um, put together a vanilla training workshop with myself and in collaboration with the University of South Pacific based in Samoa. We had a three-day vanilla training workshop for 20 participants, I believe, focusing more on women, women farmers. And the whole purpose of that was so that we could introduce vanilla crop growing here in Samoa. A success story that has come out from um, mentoring and training vanilla farmers here is one that we have in Lefanga. This farmer has been growing vanilla for over a year now. He was actually a participant of the FAO USP Vanilla Training Workshop. And through my mentorship and ongoing um, training opportunities for him, he has now got over 300 vanilla vines. So that is the type of success that we're looking for from these 20 participants that went through the workshop. There is room in the global market for beautiful vanilla to come from the Pacific region. So I'm starting with Samoa and I'm hoping that I can get the opportunity to go and train regionally so that we can step outside of Samoa and start growing vanilla in other Pacific regions. applause for the beautiful Shelley Burridge. Um, so like I said, unfortunately, Ms. Burridge isn't able to join us today. However, if you do have questions or are interested to know more about the work that she does together with FAO and USP, please refer your questions to Mr. Joseph Niemma um, on to my right, if that's okay. I do hope you found this um, particular innovation useful. Uh, especially given the, the um, massive strides she's made within a year's time in training um, many more farmers in, in this particular endeavor. So if, if I may, I'd like to now move on to our final innovation. Um, innovation. Um, last but not definitely not the least, I invite Mr. Donisiano Kelly to take us through the Genome uh, Organic Fruits USB Hot Air Dryer for the production of fruit and tuber uh, chips. I'll leave it to Mr. Kelly to take us through this very exciting initiative. Mr. Kelly, thank you. Good morning. My presentation has two parts. The first one will be here and then the other part will be outside because I have a number of partners. Uh, University of the South Pacific is also helping me to upscale this project, so just to let you know about it. Okay, regarding my uh, presentation, as you can see on the slide, uh, it's more or less on food processing. So the problem as all of you may have already known, is the lack of facilities and storage in the rural communities uh, that leads to lost or waste of food. So this is the problem that I am trying to address in Solomon Islands. We know there are scattered islands and 90% of our population lives in rural communities. The solution that we are working in is the development of a uh, technology that will enable smallholders and households to sort of preserve their food because they have a lot of uh, perishable food at their disposal but not able to preserve them. So that leads to the solution. We are looking for a solution a simple solution that is easy to follow, that is environmentally friendly, and the rural community are able to participate on it more or less efficiently. 
So as you can see on the slide, the solution was welcomed by rural communities. As pictures there, those two ladies are very happy and very excited about our innovation because it helps them to improve uh, food security at home. They were able to preserve food and store at home so that during times of natural disaster or there's a death in the family, they already have food at their disposal, so which makes things easier. I'd like to move on to the uh, innovation in pictures. The development of the hot air dryer is very cheap. It does not uh, exceed uh, 500 or 1,000 US dollars, which means that it can be duplicated easily at a cheaper cost and spread in the community or on the regional level. Because I know in other countries, there are rural people who are also struggling to solve the same problem that we in Solomon Islands are trying to solve. So it's cheap. With the evidence that uh, we have uh, come across, for instance, perishable food like cassava would only last for one or two days. But with this innovation, we're able to extend the shelf life of cassava without electricity up to three or four months, just by simply drying it which makes food more efficient and more available at home to the bigger community, those that live in rural communities. So with uh, the families that uh, we've been working with, uh, you have the uh, photo of the dryer on the other side. Uh, with the dryer, we are able to also uh, dry cassava chips that were later converted into cassava flour. And this is also possible with uh, uh, banana or potato. We locally, uh, normally call it kumara in the Solomon Islands. You can also do that. And with that flour, you can add value to it. You, it's possible to make bread at home and uh, cookies for the kids going to school. So these are the results, evidence, that we came across. And yeah, it is working. So can I ask the slides, uh, go to the second slide, please? Okay, sorry, I think the, the, uh, the SWOT analysis that uh, was done by a team that I've been working with as well. The strength of uh, this innovation is that it connects farmers who need solution immediately after post-harvesting. So this is, uh, we were able to, to do that. We already tried out uh, 20 units, and we secured some business within the town itself where we can sell our products on. So the innovation does not rely on electricity. You can use uh, simple uh, uh, woods in the village, even grass in the village. You can use uh, tree fruits like Christmas tree or whatever to uh, energize the, the dryer. So during our trainings, we also know that people have accepted our innovation because it's simple. The opportunity, there is great opportunity at the national level, which is locally in Solomon Islands, and also on the regional level. Uh, it is a partnership that we are building on, so it is the opportunity that we work with the USP who help us upscale the hot air dryer, and we are also working with other partners that help us to put together correct information on how to upscale the dry and operate it. So in general, there are actors and donors who show some interest in our innovation. 
But there are some weaknesses in our innovation as well. Like the capacity is quite small compared to some of the sizes of the garden. For instance, if you have a lot of um, breadfruit harvested from the tree, that may take you one or two days to dry them because of the size of the dryer. So we need to work on that one. We also need to make sure that we have more information with regard to usage, especially the air and how to operate it. Again, we have achieved some results as you have seen. So we would also require help, especially in the promotion and marketing of the efficiency of this particular equipment. There are some threats that we also came across, and one is food safety, food certification, especially the use of uh, food grade materials to construct our dryer. But this is what uh, we are working with FAO on to try to upscale. We also have problem with our farmers at some stage where we rent out the dryers to them with the hope that they will connect with us family because we are buying a primary processed product from them. Sometimes uh, they just fade away and we lose that connection. So this is one of the threats that uh, we came across. So uh, this uh, concludes my presentation here because I will also be having the other part of the presentation outside with the help of uh, University of the South Pacific who, are, who will be demonstrating how to use the dryer and we are going to also look at some of the finished products that uh, we have processed uh, using this hot air dryer. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kelly, for this very informative um, presentation. We will be going outside to um, have a demonstration on the, um, the work that's been done by JEDOM. Uh, but before that, I'd like to inform uh, participants that um, after the demonstration, we will give you approximately 10 to 15 minutes to enjoy the refreshments and coffee, to be able to network a little bit before we're um, then boarding our buses to, to go and um, experience the, the field visits. Um, I'd also like to uh, inform you that um, if you do recall the MAWA app um, collaboration with Women in Business, Development Incorporated, um, they do have a client um, one of them is um, selling handicrafts outside, uh, so please, if you can, support um, our grassroots level uh, women from the Potasi Development Trust. Um, and finally, before we move outside, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you very much, um, colleagues online. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Simona, would you like to say a few words before we wrap up? Thank you, you so much, uh, Fiasili. Honorable uh, Minister of Agriculture um, of Samoa, distinguished uh, representatives of governments across the Pacific, um, distinguished uh, colleague, regional director of FAO, uh, John Jun Kim, um, Saina Voti, the lead of the Small Island Developing State um, Unit of the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, um, of the United Nations in New York. Um, my dear colleague, uh, Xian Jun, uh, the our head of FAO, and all of the uh, uh, development partners in the room, I just wanted on behalf of the United Nations to welcome you to uh, the event this week. There is nothing more important to all of us in the Pacific than strengthening food systems and ensuring that people have access to food and uh, draw more on the resources of uh, the beautiful islands of the region. I just wanted to inform that the United Nations has just completed the next five-year cooperation framework, 2023-2027. Uh, the way we engage with all of the countries of the Pacific 14 islands and uh, can island countries and, and territories, and we put at the center of it um, 
investing in redesigning and strengthening uh, food systems for access to nutritious food, also the health system uh, of the Pacific, um, understanding that those are key entry points to ensure that the region is building resilience. And one last point, having just come back from Sharma Sheikh from the climate summit, I would like to also um, inform that we would like to be able to work with you as much as possible on ensuring that food systems are sustainable in terms of the resources, natural resources that are being used, the climate, the environment around us. And hopefully with, with some resources for the loss and damage facility that will soon be established, we will be able to invest to sustain this investment in food systems. So again, a very warm welcome from uh, the entire UN family and we look forward to engaging with you throughout those days and discussing solutions that work for the Pacific. Thank you very much indeed, uh, soy foie. Thank you very much, Simona, for those very kind words. Um, as I was saying, I would like to take this opportunity to thank colleagues online who have participated uh, in the forum. Uh, colleagues included government uh, participants as well as um, uh, private sector and NGO partners. So, Vinaka Vakalevu colleagues, just to let you know, we will be reconvening here tomorrow at 9.30 for those of you who are online. But for the time being, we would like now to move um, over to the tent um, next to this room um, to witness the demonstration from JEDOM. And then we have the morning tea for about 15 uh, minutes. And then, of course, um, we will take on the, um, the field trip that has kindly been um, uh, organized by the government of Samoa. So thank you once again, everyone, for your patience. Thank you. Over. Oh, my God. 